Carlos Rodon is officially off the board, signing with the Yankees. And now it's time to talk for real. What is AJ Preller going to do for a starter? Because we're starting to run out of options. How's it going, everyone? My name is Finn Fryer. Welcome back to another video where today we're going to be discussing this starter market and how important it is for AJ to strike while the iron's hot because right now he's just letting names fall off the list, off the list, and we need to get the talent we want. And that's why it's very important to sign someone now. But before we even hop into this video, guys, if you are yet to hit that subscribe button, please do so. Comment down below right now before we even start this video. What starting pitcher do you want to be signed to the San Diego Padres this offseason? Of course, like the video if you haven't already. Let's get into this. Rodon off the board isn't as big of a deal as it seems. I know I talked about a video, hey, anything's possible, sky's the limit, but our buddy from the athletic, Dennis Lynn, the beat writer for the San Diego Padres, had this to say. The agent of Carlos Rodon, Seidler is close with Carlos Rodon's agent, Scott Boris, but the Padres don't seem to be in the market for what could be a fourth contract of at least 200 million, with Darvish, Snell, and Manny on the books, of course, coming off the books as well. And what does he mean by that? Well, he means we were never really in. Of course, it's amazing. Hey, we could have signed Carlos Rodon if we wanted to. We could sign whoever we want, clearly, but it just wasn't what we wanted to do. It seems like it seems like Seidler was like, hey, if we have these group, core group of guys, we're gonna choose these core group of guys over adding Rodon and going all in. So he kind of wants that, you know, he wants that elongated window, which was my question in one of my recent videos, of course. But let's hop into who we should sign starting pitching wise. Guys, you already know the first name I'm gonna say. If you've been on my channel before, you know who I'm gonna talk about, and that is Nasty Nathan Eovaldi, my favorite pitcher. I will come out and say it now. Everyone in the comment section is like, oh, you seem obsessed with Nate Eovaldi. Yes, I am because of his ability in the postseason, and he throws 100 miles an hour, and he has a cutter, and he has a splitter, and he has a great curveball. These are all great pitches, and they work out extremely well in the postseason. He's a postseason pitcher, and it's very, very important to the San Diego Padres. He finished fourth in Cy Young voting in 2021. 2022, he wasn't really healthy. He had shoulder problems, but if he stays healthy, he is that four spot we need. You know, four years, 80 million seems like the ballpark that he's looking for. I think we could slide ourselves into that. It'll add a little bit of depth to the pitching market in the future that the San Diego Padres need because Darvish could be gone next year. Snell could be gone next year. I'm not saying they are gone, but they very well could be gone. Same with Nick Martinez if he decides to opt out, of course. So this is a very, very good decision. Nate Eovaldi is my first option. Now, my second option is going to be Johnny C, a.k.a. Johnny Cueto. Johnny Cueto came off of a resurgence in his career at 37 years old, and he was great. He was great. He ate innings. He did everything the White Sox asked of him and some. Now, is he a guy that you want pitching the postseason in that four spot? Absolutely not. So I think if you get him or if you get a couple of the names I'm going to mention next, you need to trade for someone at the deadline, which is very, very possible. Of course, you just look at hey, who's available on a losing team that's a free agent next year? That's what, all you have to check. As soon as you see that list, you'll be able to kind of see, oh, we can maybe get, you know, a Sonny Gray at the deadline or someone around there. And that's all you have to do to check it out. But I mean, Cueto's a great option. He'll eat innings for us as long as he's healthy. He's kicking, man. Now, the next person on this list is going to be Michael Waka. Michael Walker came off of another resurgence year in his career with the Boston Red Sox, and he was very, very solid, but he fits in that same thing as the Cueto book, where it's like, yes, he's a great signing, but he's not a postseason guy. You can't count on him in the postseason if we want to win a World Series. That four spots is as important as the one spot in the postseason because they all have to start in important games. So that's why it's very, very important. But yes, he can eat innings, and yes, he can do these things for the Padres that we very, very much need. And I think he's very accountable. He came off of a below four ERA season, which is very, very good for a four starter, in my opinion. So you got to be happy with him, what he's been able to do. Now it's just what will he want money wise? And my guess is he's going to be kind of similar to Cueto in that 12 to 16 million a year, which is a little pricey. And it's like, uh, I don't know if I really want to spend that, but let's be honest here, AJ, if you want a free agent, you're running out of names. And as names trickle down on this list, the more of the question I'm asking myself is, AJ Preller, are you willing to go into the trade market for a starter? Because that's what you're going to need to do. If AJ Preller waits another week to sign a starter, we're going to need to go to the trade market. Nate Eovaldi is going to be gone. Johnny Cueto is going to be gone. Michael Walk is going to be gone. You know, there's a lot more names that are going to be disappearing off the board. You know, Seth Lugo is a guy we have interest in, but Seth Lugo wants to start. And yes, I understand AJ Preller loves that flexibility and Seth Lugo is that flexibility, but he hasn't started a game since 2017. 
So can we really trust him as a starter? You know, as we kind of cut down to the wire on this offseason, it's very, very important, like I keep reassuring you guys, for AJ Preller to act now. Season, I have never been in panic mode, but I'm starting to get towards it right now because let's be honest here, there's moves that Preller needs to make and he has not done so. So it'd be very, very nice if we could dial it up right about now. AJ, please, that would mean a lot to me and it would mean a lot to the people that support the San Diego Padres. So I think it's time we get it dialed up and lock it in for the rest of this offseason. Obviously, there's no questioning AJ Preller. He's been able to do what he's been able to do. And there's a reason why we finished in at the NLCS last year. And you know, there's a reason why we're going to do better than that this year, probably. And the question is, who's going to our number four starter going to be? And that's what I'm going to leave this video off with. Who do you think is going to be our number four starter and why? But yeah, guys, that is going to wrap up the video. If you are yet to hit that subscribe button, please do so. Like the video if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys on the next video. Peace. Yes. 305 to the 619, baby. Let's go. Let's go, San Diego. Lift that shit up, San Diego. Let's fucking go. Woo! It's our fucking house. Hey. It's our house right here, baby. Let's I go. Love